Hi, this is Mr. McGovern. Um, this is the seventh video in the Intro to Wave series, and I'm doing another Doppler problem. Um, so, I say to my class that the waves paper is the easiest to pass. And I, th I think it's the easiest to pass because it's very predictable what the questions are going to be about. There's always a question on the Doppler effect, there's a question on standing waves and pipes or strings, and there's a question on diffraction gratings and interference patterns. So it's very easy to predict what the three questions are, um, but I find it's the hardest to get uh, for students to get um, excellences because every so often they throw in um, a quite a complicated Doppler effect question or quite a complicated interference pattern question. So this is an example of a complicated Doppler effect question. So it's from 2020. I'm going to go through question 3A to D, all of them. So the speed of sound in the air is 340 metres a second. Lily and Dave are conducting an experiment. Lily drives her car from point A to B and Dave records the frequency of the sound waves, and it's shown in this graph here. So use the graph, state the frequency that Dave hears when the car travels towards him. So as always with Doppler effect questions, I draw myself a little sketch to remind myself of what's going on. When a car is coming towards someone, the wave fronts are bunched together. Small wavelength, high frequency. So car's carrying towards Dave, he's looking for a high frequency. On this graph here, um, the high frequency is 900 hertz. So that's the answer to A. So consider the motion of the sound waves from the car horn, give reasons why Dave's meter detects a change in frequency as the car approaches him and then goes past him. So you're explaining why does it have high frequency here and then it becomes low frequency when it's gone past him. So effectively they're saying, can you explain the Doppler effect? So we did that in the last video. I always draw my little diagram. In effect, I'm just trying to explain this diagram using words. So to start with, let's talk about the waves in front of the car. So the car is moving towards Dave, and each new wave is emitted closer to Dave than the previous wave. Right, as it's moving, it emits more waves, and they're closer and closer together. That means the waves in front of the car are bunched. That means the smaller wavelength, smaller wavelength is high frequency. Opposite happens when the car is moving away. Um, the waves behind the car end up becoming more spread out. Spread out is longer wavelength, longer wavelength is lower frequency. So the answer to the whole question is combining those two ideas. So when the car approaches and goes past Dave, what happens is the frequencies transition from the high frequencies of approaching to the low frequencies as the car moves away from him. And that explains that graph. C is the really hard one mathematically, the real, real tricky one that people would, would struggle with. So use the information from the previous page, calculate the constant speed of the car that Lily is driving. Here's a Doppler formula. We can use plus or minus depending on if a car is coming towards us or away from us. Um, they've given us the velocity of the wave, 340 metres a second. We don't know the original frequency. Um, if we want to, we can work out the frequency that it, it comes towards us at, 900 hertz, and then away from us at um, 800 hertz. Now, here's the trick. A lot of people will think that um, the frequency of the car, if it was standing still, is halfway between those two. And I made a quick point on a, a video earlier that it's not. It's tricky, but it's not quite. So you have to assume you do not know what that frequency is, what the original stationary frequency is. Um, and then you have to work with the information you've got. And there's some serious algebra to get here. It's not impossible. It's just a few steps to get there. So I'm going to write an equation for the approaching wave. Um, so when the car's coming towards them. So in that case, um, it's a high frequency. So to get that, I need a minus on the bottom. And I've called that, instead of F dash, I've called it FA for F approaching, just so I don't get confused. When it's receding away, we get the lower frequency. To get a lower number, we need a plus on the bottom of the fraction, and I've called it receding, so FR. What I'm going to do with both of these is, um, because I have velocity of the wave, tick, I've got that. I've got the frequency approaching, which is 900. I've got the frequency receding, which is 800. Um, I need to find the velocity of the source. That's the speed of the car. But I don't have F, I don't have this original stationary frequency. So what I'm going to do is rearrange both of these equations so F is the subject of the equations. I do that just by dividing by the bracket. So in this case I divide by both sides by the bracket and I get F by itself. And the receding one I divide both sides by the bracket and get F by itself. So now I've got F by itself. Okay, I'll just, just move them up the page here so you can see them. Um, I could do the whole thing in algebra and just leave it as letters. The reason I'm not going to in this video is because it gets confusing between VWs and VSs and, and I'm probably going to trip up on myself um, trying to say it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert everything to the numbers that I know. Um, so I know the approaching frequency is 900, the speed is 340, I need to find the velocity of the source, which is the car. 
and for the receding one I know it's 800 um, Hertz and the same velocity of the wave. So now I'm going to equate those two because they both have the same F which is the stationary frequency. So I'm going to make both of these equations equal to each other. And I'm trying to rearrange this now to find the velocity of the source and you'll notice there's one on every side of the equation. Now the first step I'm going to do algebraically is because I've got 900 divided by 340 divided by again because of the two divided by's it's the same as the times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the bottom of each side of that equation, the 340 minus Vs and the 340 plus Vs to the top of their sides. So now you see I've got 900 times 340 minus Vs and 800 times 340 plus Vs. Now I've got um, a divide by 340 on both sides so they can cancel out. Get rid of those. Now I just want to open up the brackets. So 900 times 340, I'll work it out in my calculator. It's 306,000 minus the 900 times Vs. I do the same on the other side. Um, you'll want to do this if you really want to be able to get this yourself. Maybe watch this video and see if you can do the algebra yourself and come back and check. Um, simplify it all out so all the, the Vs's are on the same side and find Vs by itself and we get 20 meters a second. So that's the answer. That's an excellent question and people will really struggle with that one. Um, I've seen a similar question turn up in scholarship exams as well. And D, after Lily passes point B, she decides to accelerate. That's the key word there away from Dave. Use your knowledge of the Doppler effect to explain how and why the frequency that Dave hears changes during this time. So, cars coming towards you, you get bunching. Um, if it's moving faster and faster towards you, you're going to get more and more bunching. If it's moving faster and faster away from you, you're going to get more and more spreading out of the waves. So when accelerating away, the car is increasing the distance between successive wave fronts. That means that the wavelength is getting bigger and bigger. Bigger wavelength means the frequency gradually decreases. Lower, lower pitch. We could do the same thing with the graph. We start off um, at 900, it goes past and down to 800. And if we're speeding up, if the car's speeding up as it moves away, we get um, the frequency decreasing even more and more and more with that acceleration. And finally, if you wanted to, you could have explained it using the, um, the formula here. So as Vs, the velocity of the source, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that frequency gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Is there an inverse relationship?